All right, so this is Bits for You, episode 36, and I'm Robert, your host. Uh, being Halloween month, yes, October is the month of Halloween, uh, one of my favorite holidays. Uh, we are going to be reviewing a few horror movies. So in this episode, we're going to be reviewing the Grindhouse classic from 1982 that was released. Uh, it's called Pieces. It's an Italian Spanish co production. Um, I don't want to go into much detail now because we go to, into that, um, during the episode. It, it, it was just fun watching that movie. Um, that's all I gotta say. Uh, just, it's lunacy. The, the crazy shit that happened in that film. Uh, we talk about, um, some news of, uh, the anime the highest grossing anime in history in Japan, uh, Your Name, is being made into a live action film. Thoughts on our, on the Netflix original film live action remake of Death Note. Uh, one of us gets our hands on the Super Nintendo Entertainment System Classic Mini, also known as the SNES Classic Mini. Um, we t- chat about the Splatoon 2 killer uh, arriving on the PS4. Reviews of the last two South Park episodes, which leads us into something that is been in the news um, recently. South Park covers it. Would you want to have a DNA? DNA sorry, blah, 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 fuck. Always during these fucking intros, my tongue just craps out. Would you want to have a DNA ancestry test done on you? So let us know. You can always email us at bits for you podcast at gmail.com our twitter is at bits for you podcast same on, same as uh, facebook at bits for you podcast uh, instagram is bits for you pod uh, you have all those uh, outlets to get in contact with us please review us on itunes every iphone has the apple podcast app you search for us once you search for search for us you'll see the option to write a review uh, with the new iOS 11, it's towards the bottom. You just gotta scroll until you see a review. Click it, give us a rating, give us a brief review, and that will help us out a lot. We appreciate that. Uh, any other podcast app that you are listening to us on might have a review option. If it does, please leave us a review. I know Podbean has a review option. Um, I'm not sure the other ones. There's a ton of them. There's dozens of podcast apps. Please share this with your friends and family if you are enjoying our show. And I'll just, uh, yeah, it's going to start right now. Anyways, Javier, how was your weekend? It was great. Great, hey, Robert. That's it, just great. Yeah. What did you do? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing at all. I just played video games. Just video games. I watched the movie too. Huh? Is that movie uh, a film called Pieces? Yes. Mm, we're gonna be talking about that. So let's talk about it right now. Okay. <laughs> so you you it, um, what we're planning on doing is um, you know being October uh, month of Halloween, one of my favorite holidays. What? what? Halloween. Halloween. That's that's the holidays should be abolished. That Why? should be that should be that holiday is my one of my favorite holidays. But people are always saying it should be abolished. I mean, not, you know that's what I hear. Should abolish them. <laughs> no. That wouldn't that wouldn't be nicer. We want to keep it all friendly over here. But um, so we 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 plan on reviewing a movie, a couple movies this month. Uh, you know, horror classics or just horror films that we are drawn to or or is in our radar. So how did uh, you decided this time to review the movie Pieces from 1982? So how did that come about? Well. Uh to be honest, Eli Roth is the one who really sold me on that. 
for people who don't know, he's a director for uh, Hostile and Hostile and Hostile Cannibal. Two. What's the Cannibal one? Uh, Green Inferno that came out yes. a couple years ago. Yeah, it's another one. Anyways, he talked this up. This is his favorite film. I know he spent a lot of money on getting like a poster remastered and stuff like this for his house. Uh-huh. <clears throat> he talked, you know, a lot about it. And uh, you know, it's told me because it's one of those old grindhouse pictures. This is this movie is a Spanish film, but it was dubbed when it came over here. Yeah, it's like a Italian Spanish co production. All these uh Yeah, yeah. Films so the way he era. described it, it sounded really cool. Like it's a lot of blood, a lot of death, uh-huh. a lot of nudity. A lot of, and then just jokes, like dark humor. <laughs> All right, so I guess you're, you're, we're we're gonna go into it. So um, this is uh, we're gonna this is gonna be spoiler ish review or discussion on the on the film. <laughs> so so we I saw it on that app. What was that app called? Shredder? Shredder? Is that horror app? Yeah, uh, I should gotta say this if, if, in case people were thinking it was fast forwarding. Mm-hmm. I don't think this will. Rev- you know, ruin your experience with the movie. It's not like a... No, it's not a great movie. It's... And I liked it. It's just, it's not a... You actually liked it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not watching it for, like, uh, the story, to be honest. I'm watching it for the fun. Look, I'm gonna... It's gi- a fun movie. I'm gonna give you my history. Uh, so, I'm a big horror fan as, as well as you are. And I... Uh, around, like, 10 years ago, I was into the whole, like you said, like, Eli, Eli Roth... But I forgot who else recommended me a lot of these obscure Italian movies like Dario Argento, who's very popular in the Italian horror f- industry. He did um, Suspiria, which is one of my all time yeah. very, very horror movies uh, from Europe. Um, so there's a lot of knockoffs in that time frame, like from Italy, mostly some Spanish directors, but mostly Italy. And this is one of them. These are this is this is like a low budget, as you mentioned earlier, grindhouse yeah. film. Just just. To pause you real quick about Suspiria, mm-hmm. I actually pre-ordered the remaster of that. I'm getting it in like in November, I think it is. Oh shit! Uh, Amazon has the remaster already on sale. On- no, it's a small company. Oh. They're only releasing like five or ten thousand initially. Oh Jesus! What is it? Shout yeah. Factory? It's not them, right? No, no, I forget the name. I-, I remember I looked up at work and I looked at their website to see you know where to get pre-ordered. And they had some like porn movies too. So I'm like, oh shit. Because <laughs> you, see, you see the nude covers and everything. And I'm yeah. like, I'm at work. <laughs> right. You don't want to look at that at work. So they have a remaster, like a 4K remaster or just a, a, a traditional yeah, remaster? Yeah. If you have comparisons and stuff, it mm. looks incredibly well remastered. It looks like it's going to be a great buy. Oh, I think I see it here. It's an, it's an import though. I don't think it's being released no, no, domestically. They, no, it's being re released. It's remastered. I'm telling you, it's a very small release. Huh? Because I'm when, when I get when I get it, I'll you know I'll let you guys know. No, just uh, actually on Twitter, post the link so I can try to get it myself, sir. All right, I'll do that. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's any left still. I don't, I don't give a fuck. Just just do it. Maybe there's some people. Uh, Amazon has a uh, if you guys uh, Google yeah. uh, put up Suspiria, uh, S U S P I R I A. Amazon has a 4K restoration region B Italian import for fifteen dollars and twenty four cents on Blu-ray. Yeah, mine is not an import. Yeah, uh, so with the region B, it's region locked to them, so you might have to have a region free player to play it. Uh, uh, America is region A, Europe is region B, so that won't do us any good. But the idea oh. is that you know it's it's another tradition, uh, not traditional, but it's another big. Horror movie. Yeah. Um, Lucio Fulci is, is another famous... Kind of the... Mm-hmm. No, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that Lucio Fulci is another famous horror director. He did uh, the zombie movies, like Zombie, Zombie 2. I think, even think, I think he even directed Zombie 3 and City of the Dead. His movies, like, is famous... Uh, remember, Javi, the, the famous uh, zombie fighting shark? No, I, I know. I remember those movies. Yeah, so he directed those movies. So, I, I it, like, 10, 15 years ago... I was in that phase that I was just watch, watching a lot of these Italian uh, horror movies. They were mostly banned. They even did those cannibal movies where they go to like Amazon and cannibals start eating people. I saw a couple of those, like Cannibal Holocaust. I saw that one as well years ago. I mean, the Italians did some really good movies. I mean, right. talk about spaghetti westerns and stuff. Exactly. So going um, into pieces, so 
tell tell me your thoughts on uh, on the beginning. I would say actually the first two minutes because the, the 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 movie just cuts right to the chase in the first two minutes. Yeah, this movie doesn't waste time. It, no. uh the movie's not long. To... It's an hour and twenty six minutes, so it's not a long movie. No, it's not. It gets to the point. It's not gonna waste time. It's it does the background the killer. He kills his fucking mom. <laughs> Uh, because in the first uh, two minutes, <laughs> yeah, within the first two minutes, kills but, his mom. But, but but set it up. Why why does that happen? She was taking taking away his porn and stuff. He had like porno magazines and stuff. No, no, I guess you forgot. Uh, he was building a puzzle, one of those like hundred piece or two hundred piece puzzles that you put on the floor or on a table, oh. and you put the pieces together. That's why it's called pieces. And it was a nude woman as he was putting the piece. And then the mom comes in and be, and she stands, she stands over his shoulder and she yells at him like, what are you doing? Blah, you know, that's disgusting. You're filthy, just like your father. Da, da, da. And she's like, go get a box. I'm going to br- throw away all this filth. And she goes through his room and I guess she's getting books or trying to see if he has on her any other like. No, he, he does. He has like yeah, magazines, magazines and, stuff. and stuff. Right. But that, that's how it started. It was it was a puzzle. And the puzzle was a, a nude woman. And, and he, he kills her with an axe. Right. Like, so within those two minutes, he comes back around. and she's like, and she's like, where are you? Uh, you know, give me the box. And as soon as she turns around, he has an axe and he starts, he axes, <laughs> he hacks her head on the top. And uh, he asked her a question. Yeah, he asked her a question. Um, it was it was poorly done, like the whole blood and gore. Like doing some research, um, the most of the blood effects were like from a slaughterhouse. Yeah, they use real blood though. Yeah, so. yeah, real blood from you know from a slaughterhouse. They use a lot of uh, animal uh, organs, and stuff, organs, yeah. and and even a uh, uh, scene which we'll go into later uh, that ha- that involved a pig. Well, they use the pig as a stand-in. Yeah, but uh, dead pig. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was already dead. <laughs> it's a slaughterhouse. Um, so the film takes place in Boston. It starts off when he's a kid in 1942. And come to uh, when I was doing the research, I don't know if you noticed this too, but the movie was not even filmed in Boston at all. It was filmed mostly in Italy and Spain. They go on Spain. Yeah. So they, they and they had like I think a couple of uh, American actors, and and I guess they you know they obviously flew to Spain, did the movie, and that's that was that. But, yeah, um, so not to go to like every detail of this movie. Mm-hmm. Basically, one thing they do is they try to make you guess who the killer is, right? Because they have that very stereotypical, big rugged. Like, there's a scene where this guy is a big rugged dude, bald, brown beard, right. kind of chunky, strong. Yeah, he, he, he's, he he's he's cutting stuff with a chainsaw, right? And then when he's cleaning it, he has a smirk. <laughs> yeah, you know, very evil it was act. so poorly done. Like, <laughs> like it was I, funny. I was, it was no, funny. it was funny, but. I, I, like that actor in the eighties, he was in a lot of movies. He used to play like a heavy or, or a villain. I even th- I even think he did a he played a villain in a, in a James Bond movie, one of those Bond movies in the eighties. The way but, the way he looks at you and stuff. Yeah. It, it does look, <laughs> <laughs> the way he was looking at the professor. Remember? And it was uh, dude. There was remember that scene. Okay, so I think it was the pool scene. Uh, I'm jumping here, but it, so there's um we already described the mom gets gets killed in the first two minutes. Then there's a. Uh, so they they jump to nineteen eighty two. There's always a death scene happening in right. the movie. Every like every like six minutes, minutes or something. Or something yeah. yeah, but there's yeah. not a lot of deaths. There's only like seven body counts or eight. Eight people get killed in the whole movie. Oh, uh, whatever, you get the idea. There's a lot of bo- dead bodies. He, yeah. <laughs> they basically <laughs> something happens is, and then there's a killing and it makes you second guess who the actual killer is. You think it's this stereotyped uh, easy to mark heavy guy, but it's not. The cops uh, don't think it's him. And they never say really why. Too but much. but that scene where he comes in with the lady, um, I think she's swimming in the in the well, she's swimming in the in the pool, and he, all of a sudden he comes in and he's fighting the cops. That was so bad, dude. I was laughing at that. <laughs> yeah, so they, they try to fool you. You don't see who actually kills the lady, no. but this guy that we just mentioned is you, in the pool room. He has a black gloves. And- um, so you and he's s- yeah, and he happens to be t- going for the the <laughs> the chainsaw. Yeah. So but- the cops like he caught basically it looks like he got caught red-handed, and the cops fight him and everything. Yeah, he throws one of the cops in the pool, and <laughs> it was so bad. <laughs> well, he looked like he was gonna kick their ass. Like he, the cops were like skinny dudes. Yeah, but uh, and this guy looks like he cuts trees for a right living. before the killer kills. You see him uh, building the puzzle again. The puzzle. He's putting the pieces together of the yeah. naked woman. 
Uh, and it's all you see is black gloves. Uh, uh, he's wearing a black trench coat. You don't see the face, obviously, because they want to keep it, you know, they want to keep us in suspense as to who the killer is. Um, it's 40 years after the boy killed his mom. We he's don't know. He's killing women in this movie. Yeah, only women. And uh, yeah, usually nude. And so he's w- walking around with black shoes, black pants, black trench coat, gloves, and a hat. And the funny thing that, that cracked me up, too, is like when he would walk, you would hear his breathing like, yeah, like I'm like I mean, this guy's out of shape. <laughs> no, I think he's more like a perverted moaning. Yeah, like, like I don't know if it was perverted, but he was like, like let, let me. I think I could. Obviously, he's killing all, all these. It new sounds women. like sort of like this. Yeah, like a pervert. <laughs> like he's getting he's getting off. <laughs> oh, that shit was funny, dude. That that movie had me. <laughs> every every few minutes, I would just laugh at the fucking craziness. I gotta get to my favorite part. But um, after that scene with the pool. So here's another thing about the, the, mm. the, the we're talking about the cops and the fighting. Right. So the cops uh, don't tell you why they let this guy go. Mm-hmm. They, they say there's they basically say there's not enough evidence. That's all they really said. That's it. <laughs> and then they for some reason they have one of the students help him with the case. Exactly. <laughs> and for another reason, they put in female spies. Uh, and uh, one, just one lady. At first, they said there's gonna be two, and they're yeah, like, No, yeah, no, and nobody else wanted to volunteer, so I'm the only one. It's a tennis player. Why it's, is it? Why are they volunteering? Like, they may sound like it's a charity case, <laughs> yeah. So, she's this, a she's a cop, she used to be a tennis player, and they just put her in there, like, Oh, I just volunteered. <laughs> and the kid or the, the college guy that you, you were just mentioning. He's like Mr. Casanova. He's sleeping around with a bunch of the the women in the college. And yeah. <laughs> I was doing research like he the director wanted the lady who's like in her 40s and while the the year the movie came out. Uh you could tell she's, you know, more mature than the kid or the kid even though he's probably like 30. Um the the director wanted to have her and him to have a sex scene, but she said no. So in this and there's a moment where he walks her to her room, to her to her apartment. And he's like, are you going to invite me in for coffee? And she's like, no. (laughs) (laughs) That was like, what the fuck is this? And the kid was like really into her. I'm like, dude, this kid's going to fuck her. (laughs) Yeah. He's chasing her throughout the movie. Yeah. Oh, man. (laughs) What do you think? Another another thing about this. So we talk about that. Mm -hmm. This this killer, you know, he's you mentioned he's in a trench coat and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. He's trying to be very sneaky. But how is he sneaky killing people with a chainsaw? Exactly. <laughs> like you're thinking it's all quiet and he's just sneaking around Dude, and all of a sudden he just revs up the chainsaw. Come on, if you see like, somebody walking down the hallway with a big ass chainsaw, wouldn't that be suspicious? Th- there's even that scene when he goes into the elevator and he's with the fucking chainsaw. Wouldn't you freak out when you see someone yeah. you know, all black coming with a chainsaw? The, the girl didn't freak out. The girl's like, oh, it's you. So she know, she recognizes him, but obviously the camera doesn't show his face. She gets in the elevator. And he gets in right behind her, and he—I don't know how he got the the cha- the elevator looked tiny. I don't know how he got the chainsaw in there, but then he <laughs> takes it. The, the camera pans out. He takes it out, and he just chops the woman's arm off. <laughs> it was hilarious because you could clearly tell that her arm was under her shirt <laughs> when he chopped the arm. Off. Yeah, this sounds like bloody and all that stuff, but really, I mean, it is bloody, but it's it's really just a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, just so many fun death scenes. Uh... Like just a lot of things just randomly happen. Like there's one scene where, like the like the the spy we're talking about, this lady spy. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden she gets attacked by some kung fu master. Oh yeah, dude, that was a, that out of nowhere. I was like, what the heck is going on here? This <laughs> this Asian guy, karate kicks her, tries to fight her, and she kicks him in the nuts or something, and he passes out. Yes. And then, and then that, that, that student comes. The by, student right? comes by on the motorcycle. And he's like, oh, no, uh, it's just my Kung Fu instructor. I'm like, Kung Fu instructor? <laughs> what the, why the fuck is he fighting the, the, the fucking uh, volunteer, the lady? No, There was no reason for that to be. There was, there was, it was just bla- bad writing. There was, it had nothing to do with the plot. And then I found out that the, the, the producer of the movie used to do a lot of Kung Fu movies in Italy. So he had this Bruce Lee lookalike named Bruce Lee with one E instead of two E's. And he just wrote him into the into the scene, <laughs> with no yeah. context to the rest of the film. I yeah. was like, "What the <laughs> fuck is going, dude?" I had to stop it right there because I I just it was so fucking hilarious and unexpected too. All of a sudden, you see some guy like Kung Fu. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now, in terms of the death scenes in this movie, uh, you know, the killers killing the, these naked women. Right. To, to me, my favorite one is the waterbed one. Yeah, that was well done, even though it was kind of, you know, whatever. Most of the scenes were cheesy. That one looked they like built, they, 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 they built, built it up. They actually built up to it, too. Yeah. Like, earlier in the film, some of the students in college are talking about... They're like, whoa, it's a waterbed. Oh, my God. Like, that would be so awesome. To have sex on. Yeah. They're, like, talking about how great it is to have sex in a waterbed. Yeah, she's like... the, the, the It was like in the first five minutes. She's like, imagine, you know, getting fucked on the waterbed. And right. I was and like, then oh, okay, I guess that's going to happen. Yeah, like, halfway through it. Um, so I, what makes it cool is, like, they kind of go slow motion and... In, what, was that the lady? The lady that gets killed in the waterbed was she the one that was uh, in the dance uh, studio dancing? Yeah. Okay. Notice her. She's the one in yeah. blue. Right when she when when the class started and there was like the ten other girls doing the dance, um, the dancing, uh, you know, dancing to that song. She for a quick second, or actually more like two seconds, looks at the camera directly at it and i was like oh shit she's a bad actress she looked at the fucking camera and i'm like i'm pretty sure she uh, hopefully the director kills her off or something for doing this mistake and she's the one that gets killed <laughs> i had to I had to freeze frame it i was like wait a minute she she clearly looks at the camera you know in, the, in that scene when she's doing like some spin move and she's just like i guess you know just her eyes catch the camera i don't know it was so poorly done <laughs> yeah, but he, he actually does kill someone with this. Like, he stabs her. I think this is, might be the only scene with the knife. It probably did it because of the thing. Yeah, he kills her with the knife. And it was a cool, it was great how he did it. I mean, he was stabbing her in the, in the chest, and he flips her over. She, in slow motion, she's like on the waterbed. The the blood is already covering the waterbed. And then he... He stabs the waterbed, too, and that's why it's a lot more right. water splashing and then, around. And then he stabs her in the back of the skull, and it comes out through through her mouth. Yeah, I thought that was well part. done. Yeah, um, but yeah, so the, the 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 I think the knife comes in at the end of the movie, but we'll get to that later. Yeah, it does, yeah. <laughs> well, like, to be honest, we are almost done with just talking about this movie. Yeah, there's, there's a, there, 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 there was two other scenes, two other deaths there. Um, the only other death that I liked was the one with uh, the tennis lady, the tennis student. Um, during that scene, uh, doing research, I. She, uh, I'm going to set up the scene first. So she's running in the locker room. She locks herself in one of the stalls. He has the chainsaw, obviously. He uses the chainsaw to cut the door open to the stall. And that's when we mentioned earlier that uh, they use slaughterhouses and animal organs. Well, he ch uh, chainsaws her belly. Um, but they use a pig's belly to, you know, make us think yeah. that it's, it's her belly. And... During right before he well right as he's actually chainsawing the door to get inside to kill her, the camera zooms in on her crotch and she pees herself. So I was thinking, okay, well you know that she was terrified. It turns out that she actually peed herself because she was terrified that the chainsaw while they were filming it was inches away from her body, and they were wow. using a real chainsaw. Oh shit! Yeah, so it's, that's actual like she actually peed herself, and the director just kept it in the film. <laughs> oh, makes sense. Yeah, what 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 a low budget director would do, huh? He's like, no, no, we'll just keep it in the film. Don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah. So one other major thing we kind of missed out here is the fact every time he killed somebody, the cops would be like, "Oh, we're missing a body part." Oh yes, he would take a body so, part. Yeah. So in this scene you mentioned, when he cuts her in half, he takes the like the lower like her legs. Yeah. Her legs are missing, so mm -hmm. he takes those. Yeah. For he, this, uh, for the. What your your pretty much at this point in this movie kind of figure out he's building something out of it, right? Exactly. That's which is why it's foreshadowed with the puzzle. Every time he before he kills somebody, he puts a piece of the puzzle of the woman's body body part together, right? So he's like, oh, now he puts the hand, now he puts the other the hand, arm, whatever, and then the other leg or the bottom half, etc. Right. So it kind of shows mm -hmm. you they don't tell you straight out tell you what he's doing, but they really hint at it heavily because they're missing body parts. And then he's building his puzzle throughout the movie. And so what happens is uh, it's cutting to the chase, really. Uh, the, 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 the end, they also had you guessing who it was. Because right. by, by the time of the end of the movie, they have you about maybe three people or four people you're guessing who, who could be did the killer. You, did, you suspect, uh, did, you, uh, did you guess right who the killer was? No. Who did you think it was before they actually revealed it? The professor. I, I thought so, too. Um, they they hint at the professor early on, like he's 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 like 
glancing at one of the students. Well, one of the students starts flirting with him, so he's just like staring at them. But then later on, I think it was the dean tells the the volunteer cop lady, who's the spy, um, who who's looks clearly like over forty, so she can't be a spy at the, as a fucking college student. But anyways, he tells her that no, that the professor is gay, so. You know, he doesn't think that he would, you know, we kind of letting the audience know that, hey, he's not the one killing the woman. I mean, I guess gay people don't kill women. I don't know Well, they were. You know, this is made in 82, so I don't know what they're thinking or logic no, was behind I, I, this. I, I think it's obvious that he's killing the women out of, you know, sexual desire. Right. So I don't, I don't I think that's why he rules it out. Right. Well, we knew it was the boy. It uh, had to be the boy because he killed his mom. But we don't know how the what who the boy is 40 years later. And yeah, so you maybe wanna, at the end. After they do this extensive background check and all this stuff. So tell us, who is the killer? It's the dean. Yep. The dean yeah. of the college or the university. Yeah, so basically at the end, they, uh, they go to his apartment. She's The spy lady was just talking to him, and he tricked her. He drugged her. drugged her, yeah. But the cops got there in time, and they, they stop him and kill him. What a poor fight that he had with, uh, with the, what is it, the college student? Was the one that was fighting yeah. with the knife? Once again, this college student gets <laughs> intersected in this movie, like... He's just some student, but he keeps on yeah, and, helping the and cops. Then, and then one, one of the cops is like, oh, you make like a good detective. You should consider joining the force or something. I don't know. They make something along those lines. They tell the kid. Yeah, so what happens, which is the best scene in the movie. <laughs> it's the stupidest scene in the movie. <laughs> so you're like, okay, everything's great. And uh, they're just looking around the house. Right. The, sorry, the apartment with the kid. But wait, wait, wait. And wait, wait, one did, of the detectives. This, describe yes. how the dean gets killed. Uh, he just gets shot in the head. Right? Yeah, he's fight he's fighting with the the student, and the cops come Cop, in and, sh in, yeah, shoot him, yeah. and shoot him in the head. Right. So as you were mentioning, continue. They're cleaning up the mess. They're getting evidence. Blah blah. blah. Uh, kids around still. Mm -hmm. One of, one of the detectives touches something, and it on the it's like this uh, trap door that gets opened. Right. And it's this body of combined pieces of all these women. It looks like a zombie ish. Like Frankenstein, right? You print. see, like stitches, like stitched up arm, uh, stitch up head. So you can tell that the dean, aka the boy in the beginning of the movie, the killer. Um, I think he goes by the name of Jigsaw for some reason. Oh, actually, the original movie with the title was going to be called Jigsaw, and then they, they decided not to use it. So never mind. So the killer, he was piecing together body parts, I guess, to make like his mom or something. I don't know if that signified his mom. Probably, it's probably based off of that. Because he had that uh, dress, his mom's dress in the box in the beginning of the film. Yeah, what's his name? The serial killer I'm talking about, Ed Gein. Did this pronounce his last name? Right, Ed Gein. Or Ed Gein. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, based off of that. But uh, anyways, so the body's on the floor and they laugh about it, kind of. Mm, right. And then all of a sudden, that body, the arm comes up and just rakes his dick off. Yeah, it, 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 so the kid is, is like walking by. And I guess leaving the apartment and the body, like you said, the arm, it was hilarious. Like I was expecting because watching all these horror movies from, from Europe, especially the Italian ones, the end always has some crazy ass unexplained ending, like something to shock you. And this movie did it had that same thing. So at the end, as you mentioned, the arm of the, of the dead body comes up, goes straight to his groin, squeezes his, his dick. And you see, like, blood just splatter, like, like you know, like, as, a, as a signifying that his dick and balls just exploded. <laughs> <laughs> and the movie ends there. <laughs> yes. The movie ends. The movie ends there, fade to black. I was like, holy fuck. <laughs> this movie, this movie was so badly done. So, so bad that you can't, you can't look away. You just, your eyes is just, like, glued to the, to the screen. I guess it's, it's a fun movie. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> it's a fun, I see slasher. Guess who did it? Nudity. Low and budget. Of, grindhouse. Yeah. <laughs> it's all these things. It's it's. I think it's a lot of fun. Watch it with friends. I don't. I wouldn't watch it like serious horror movie. Is this this is a fun? No, movie. this is a fun, fun movie horror. to watch. Yeah, like you, said, you mentioned with friends and and just to laugh. You know, at this crazy shit that happens on the film. It was just crazy. Would you watch it again? Yeah, I watch it again <laughs> with friends or something. <laughs> Oh shit! It's called Pieces. It's from 1982, so check it out. Um, check it out. Check it out. Uh, <laughs> we have uh, other things here. So last week it was announced that um, I posted this on our Twitter 
uh, at Bits for You podcast, which Javier likes to say like a million times during the episode. And four is number four. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> JJ Abrams is making that popular anime that Javier tried to get me to watch, but I haven't seen it yet. Uh, Your Name into a live action film. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, what are your thoughts on that? Look, there's no. Uh... <laughs> It has not been a single good. I guess Le- Live Die Repeat is the only one, but most of the time when they bring out over anime, but was Live Die Repeat uh, originally titled Edge of Tomorrow? It was a manga. I don't think it was an anime. Okay, yeah, when it was released here, it got uh, named. Uh, what was it called again? I forgot. Original title was Edge, said... Edge of Tomorrow. The movie bombed in America, so they on video and Blu-ray they 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 changed the title to Live Die Repeat. Yeah, there you go. That, that's I, I own it as that. Yeah, that's Anyways, what, that's what I, I, own. I like the movie, but. Um, it's it's because it, what what it is they did change it every time they bring over an anime movie uh, series or movie mm-hmm. they always change it like the main character in that series uh, is actually a woman but you know Tom Cruise is the lead right and uh, goes to the show well you could that's an old episode you can even listen to us complaining about it yeah the episode uh, oh, I complained titled, about it. You uh, actually liked it do we have a ghost yeah uh, you liked it I hated it. And uh, I didn't I like it. it. I didn't like it. Like I didn't think it was. I would. I wouldn't probably never watch it again. But I didn't. Uh, it wasn't as shitty as most people were complaining about. That's what it, I tried to I'll come say across. It basically, is it was. <laughs> you have to. It's really dumbed down. Very version of Ghost in the Shell, and that's why I don't like it. Uh, but anyways, when it comes to anime in Hollywood, there's no good record there. So. 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 I don't care. Can, can you give us a. A history on the anime, your name. What is it about exactly? Um, it's it's not an action flick whatsoever. This is like a little bit of a drama. Uh, Sci-fi-ish. I I read something about sci-fi elements. Body swapping he, is it? Well, I just said what is it about. Yeah, yeah. Basically, it's a body swap, and they're trying to figure out. Uh, they're just trying to identify each other, and it leads to this big. I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, it just leads to this big chase of figuring out something. But why? Why do you think that this is the most popular um, anime movie in the world? Well, at least in Japan. I don't know how well. No, it did worldwide, here. It, it's the highest grossing in the world. That's right. Actually, I did even talk about that. I did when it comes to theaters, I don't know about like sales of DVDs or Blu-rays. Uh, it's it's not like I said. It's just. Uh, is it like it a love like, story? Uh, is that why? I think the best way to describe it, it doesn't disconnect. There's no disconnect. When I mean like, by that, okay, there's a body swap, mm-hmm. but people are not so taken back from that. Usually, anime is full of like, you know, uh, mechs or something really out there. This is pretty normal compared to most that you see out there. Not there's some not ninjas flying around or, or some spirits or zombies or whatever you want to. G- girl with huge tits. It's none of that. This is a much more regular movie. Like I could see this translating better, to be honest. When it t- comes to translating other things, like Ghost in the Shell or Death Note or something, it's mm-hmm. th- it just doesn't tra- translate as well. This could be potentially be well done. The thing is, I already know what happens and stuff, so I don't know. I, I don't feel like they're gonna be, you know, uh, what's the word I'm thinking? Like uh, loyal to it, right? Or faithful to it. They're probably gonna change stuff and. You know that's always questionable when they do that stuff. Even even here for comic books, they change stuff, and people always hate when they change things. Why why do they have to change it, sir? Right, and and why change it so much? There's like I remember I was reading about uh, <clears throat> was that new Fox, the mutant movie coming out? Uh, oh, not series, not uh, movie. The gifted or something like that. It's yeah, it's on Fox. You're yeah, not they, on... they have a character in the movie that doesn't resemble. Uh, a certain character and uh, like drastically changed, and uh, we don't even know if they even say that they're related to. It's uh, what's her name, Polaris? Or, uh, anyways, she's like the, the, one of the daughters of Magneto, and hmm. they're not even sure they even mention that. Like they just remove everything away from her, basically. The only thing she has is related to the same character is just the power, the same powers. But do That's you it. do you think that J.J. Abrahams is gonna do the film justice? He said he's going to treat it with care, like the, you know. Like Star Wars. Oh, yeah. He did do Star Wars. The Force Awakens is now um, he's doing Star Wars Episode Nine, um, which. Is... I, I, will, I will admit, though. Yeah, you're right. But I will admit he does. 
like when it came to Star Wars, that first episode seven, um, if anyone else did it, they probably would have changed a lot. And I heard they did originally. And he was like, no, let's let's pay more tribute to the to the past and even have, you know, actors from the past actively be in the movie to kind of pass the torch. Right. And that was very smart. And you don't piss off anybody by doing that. Everybody accepts it now. Yeah, because you have a, you have the old with the new, and you're you're passing the torch on to the new, and to the new. Yeah, it's, cast. A, it's a transition. Yeah, a transition. So you need that. You need that baby step. And, I mean, uh, he understands. Uh, JJ obviously. hasn't done a, a bad movie, uh, at least not that I hate or dislike. Uh, most of his movies are, are entertaining. So, I mean, uh, we just have to wait and see what he does with uh, your name. When he turns yeah, into live is, action. Like I said, this is not an action flick whatsoever. So no, no, it's not. It's I totally mean, different. When I when I posted this on Twitter last week, I asked people, you know, what are your, their thoughts? So there was a, I did a little poll. Um, one of them was a huge fan and will watch. Uh, I guess, you know, um, that was one option. The other option was J.J. Abraham's Don't Do It. Another option was Hollywood will fuck it up. And then the last option was I'll give it a watch. So uh, 52% voted and said that Hollywood would fuck it up. Right, because it's... Bad, because of because of what's happened History. in the past, yeah, yeah. So there you go. Your name, uh, that that leads into Death Note. So you haven't seen it, have you? I heard so many bad things. I I, I love I love Death. You Note. have no interest in watching it on Netflix. I have though. no I have no interest in of being raped. <laughs> yeah. So I saw it opening. I think it it opened the last weekend in August on Netflix, and. I was like, okay, fuck it, let me give it a try. And the movie. Did you was, watch Death Note? I saw the anime, yeah, years ago. Okay. Yeah. Um, the anime I I enjoyed. Um, yeah, I, the anime I don't remember much about it now, but it, it was a great anime. The story was 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 okay. It was dark. It wasn't like you know these uh, cutesy anime things that that annoy you the fuck out of me. Uh, I'm this. I love the anime. I watched it several times. I own like yeah. I lo- uh, I own a book that's like, a, I guess it's like a, like a, uh, what's the word? It's just a recognized fanfic, but it's basically a side, story? side story. Huh. Like so, I, I, and I read the whole book. You so know, I, did you I, see I the? Because in Japan they made uh, three live action films, if I remember. There's four. Okay, so I heard mixed things about it. So it goes to show that even the Japanese uh, studios live action. Don't uh, do the anime justice. I don't think they have the budget. The first one, I, I only saw the first one, and I saw some of it, the one of the the fourth one, basically. Right. And the fourth one is just a, like a side story too. But uh, I saw the first one; it was okay. It's just they don't have the budget for it or the acting chops for it. Uh, so it was made on the cheap, is what you're saying. But it's still good. It's just not. Uh, people expect Hollywood and. Japanese cinema is not Hollywood, so it's it's not to that you know that that level. Right. When it comes to effects and camera work and stuff like that, not saying there's no no Japanese movie can be great. I mean, Battle Royale was really good. Obviously, the Godzilla ones, and you know, I'm not gonna count anime because that's just you know that's hand drawn. That's not that's different from what I'm talking what we're talking about. Yeah. So but yeah. I saw the Netflix, as I just mentioned, and um, I did not like it. Not one bit. It, it just, they compressed a lot of the anime, which was what, 20 or, how many episodes was that, was the anime? Yeah, it was, it was 26. Okay, the, the 26 episodes drawn out, and I don't remember the, not any of the episodes being boring or fillerish, but the movie just dragged um from the does beginning, it do the whole, the how, whole how, fucking how much movie. Of the story does it do? They they condense a lot of it. They 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 in the in the first like ten minutes you're, or fifteen minutes you're already seeing the the book fall out of the sky and um what the fuck was the demon's name? Ryoki uh, Ryuk or Ryuk. whatever. Yeah, he uh, th- he's done great by William the Foe. So that was the only thing that I liked is William the Foe as Ryuk, um, the actor as Light. That played light in, in the American version was I've seen him in other movies. He's he's okay as a in dramas. I've seen him, but as this character, there was a scene where he's like terrified that he his first time he sees Ryuk, I think it's in in the classroom in in the, in the high, in his high school, and he yells like 
off like a, a terrible yell like he screams like a little girl like it was so badly done i think i don't know if they were trying to go for comedy or not because i was laughing and i'm like wait a minute i don't remember the anime being funny maybe this is I'm, what they're going for this. it was so bad in the movie does l die uh i don't think so wait you don't think so it's a yes or no question no 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 no, no he i don't think he dies he does not so they didn't they didn't cover anything else yeah he's, al- he's, al- he's alive the midway through the series you know l is killed l is killed yeah he's alive so yeah that was changed he didn't die um the ca- actor who plays l was good he was in that movie uh get out did you see get out earlier this year get out get out <laughs> you asshole <laughs> Yeah, so he was in it. I watched it, yeah. And, and he was good. Um, Everybody else was just terrible. Like, the only g- good thing was the death scenes. Like, the it was very gory, I, you know, I, which was surprising. I didn't think it was going to be that gory. Like, you see, like, um, the first scene is the one of the, the bullies, his head gets chopped off, I think, by, like, a surfboard it comes flying through the air and just decapitates him. That was gory as fuck. Um, I wasn't expecting that. Um. Yeah, so that's the only thing that I, I enjoyed. It was like an hour and forty minutes. Other than that, the movie was was shit. It was, it wasn't good, not at all. E- even even I would think I tried to to judge it or to keep in mind like if I had somebody who has has not seen the anime, and they were just seeing this movie for the first time. I don't see what they would enjoy. I really no, don't. I mean, it's one of those series where the anime is just too good. I wouldn't even I wouldn't even bother making a live action of this. Yeah, they did, and it wasn't good. Not Maybe something in the same universe or something, but not just don't do the same story again. It's just too good. Yeah, it was no bueno. So we are going on. Do you have anything else to add? Uh, not only besides Death Note, but anything else in the film universe? No. No? Okay, so we're going to talk about what just uh, came out a few days ago. The Super Nintendo Entertainment System Classic, or known as the SNES Classic Mini. You got your hands on it. I did. You son of a bitch. It's all over my hands. Jesus. Lucky bastard. So Yeah, so what happened was... What uh, happened? It was that Friday. I uh, I had the day off. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, vacation. I actually used a vacation day. Not for the SNES Classic. But just because you I wanted just, to? I had it off for personal reasons, mm. but my personal reasons got canceled anyway. But I left the vacation there, day there anyway. Anyways, the morning of, I'm like, you know what? It's coming out. I don't think I'll get it because I didn't pre-order it or I'm not lined up. Right. But I literally got there when as soon as they opened. And I, I left the house. It was like, by the time I got to, first I went to Walmart and no, nobody was there to help me. And I didn't see it anywhere. Typical Walmart. Yeah. So, and so I actually nobody's planned... ever at the electronics section, which pisses me off. <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, you know what? I know where to go. The best buy is right next to a Toys R Us and a GameStop. Oh, okay. So like, there's three choices right there within walking distance. All in the same basically. plaza. Yeah. Okay. So I'm like, okay, let me go to Best Buy. Actually, I, I was thinking maybe going to GameStop, uh-huh. but I was driving. I saw GameStop have a line outside. I'm like, fuck this. <laughs> so uh, I went to GameStop. I'm sorry. I went to uh, Best, best buy. buy. No line. Walk in. They're just like, hey, what you here for? And I like pointed at the SNES Classic. And, okay, and uh, the they sold it to me, and I bought like an extension cable for it. I was like surprised, no line. Mm-hmm. It was just, like me and one other person there. I'm like, okay, <laughs> this, is, this came off way too easy. Yeah. And then I texted you about it, and you're like, hey. Yeah, go go back and me get one? me one. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, because I'm like, there was no line, there was nobody there. So I went back to Best Buy, and I'm like, hey, I want to buy another one. And he's like, no, sorry. We just saw you. We can only limit one per customer only. Fuck so I'm like, oh, great. But he still had some, but whatever. I, I had no other option. I, had, I, knew, I knew nobody else, so I was off. Yeah. So I'm like, you know what? Let me just go to GameStop, right? So I went to GameStop, go ahead and get in line. And then uh, when I get to the counter, he's like, sorry, just sold the last one. Son of a bitch. The guy in front of me bought it. So I was like, okay, <laughs> great. So like I said, Toys R Us is right there. Go to Toys R Us. Lady tells me, sorry, we sold out. Like, oh, oh great. And so, obviously, this is like within the first 20 minutes of opening or something like that. And I uh, already sold out. And I couldn't go to Best Buy. I told a friend. He couldn't check too much later. He called them to, before he left, he left to go get it. 
They were sold out already, too. Sold out. Yeah, I figured. But oh well. I still thought that counts. At least you tried. Yeah, I tried. Um, so, you got home. You unboxed it, which is on our YouTube channel. Yes. Uh, I unboxed it, and then I started playing Final Fantasy. How was, uh, how was the interface? Um, when you turn it Actually, on, it just boots up to like a, a main menu? Wait, hold on. Let me see this. I played Final Fantasy 15. I didn't play SNES for the whole day. Till, oh, you didn't like, play. You didn't play Final Fantasy 3, aka Final Fantasy 6, on the Super on the SNES. No. Oh. <laughs> just because people can remember from the past episodes, I was against it. Yeah, not against it. I just didn't really care to get it. Because you own the Retron 5, which plays that. Yeah. Yeah, and I skipped this part. I was actually planning to sell it. You, you're the one who talked me into it, because uh, I was gonna sell it on eBay. Uh, but then I got kind of torn also because of Star Fox 2. Right. So have you played Star Fox? Yeah, Star Fox 2 actually is uh, locked. You can't play it till you at least beat the first stage in Star Fox. Which is fine, whatever. Uh, when, you know, what Star you, Fox is a fun game. What do you mean you can't it, play it? It's like when you go to try and play Star Fox 2, it won't let you. You have to clear the first stage in Star Fox 1. Oh, you have to go to the original Star Fox finish the stage i guess it's, they try to do that as a tutorial or something i don't know why that is it's, it's not exactly it's actually pretty different oh okay so you do that and then you play star fox 2 yeah and i beat it you finished it in like 45 minutes the whole game yeah damn it was no, that, it, I did was, it, normal it was it was it was that short so this is what star fox 2 is all about you have to protect the planet once it gets 100% damage, it's destroyed and game over. Huh. So what happens is Andros sends out battleships and and little chips and all this stuff, mm-hmm. and they you know they start attacking your planet and stuff. You have to go intercept them, and then he usually conquers two random planets, and those planets will fire off missiles towards the planet to your you know your planet you're protecting. Um, I don't know why I can't remember the name because with a C. Uh, but anyways, you just have to destroy those two battleships and. Those two random planets, because there's several planets in the map. In the map. Right. You have to go uh, destroy the base there. And then you fight, uh, you know, your rival. And then uh, you fight Andros, and that's it. That's it? It's, it's, like a def- it's almost like a tower of defense game, a little bit. Actually, maybe I should have cared, compared to that. It's just, you're defending your planet. If there's missiles being shot to it, okay, go intercept the missiles. And then go attack the battleships and then the planets. So literally, you can think of it as... Random battles that you could, you know, you fight on the way. I should say random. You see the, you see them on the map. Uh, you fight the battleships. You just go inside them and blow them up. And then the planets. Well, there's a base. You destroy the base. Damn. The bosses are not that, not, not, not even hard. They're, the individual pilots are, are like the like. I can't remember why well, I can't remember the names, but there's you know named pilots. It just seems to bo- me that either the game was really easy or it's uh, shorter than the the first one. Oh, yeah, a lot shorter than the first one. Huh. I say a lot, but it's shorter. Um, well, so now, what, when you play the normal mode, mm-hmm. you find Andros, but it's like a like a hologram or something. So you have to you know, be, play it in hard mode to get to Andros. Got it. Yeah, I think I think the original Star Fox had the same uh, setup. Like yeah. If you played it in yes, e- normal or hard, it, it would change the, yeah. the end boss. So overall, do you think it was worth the 22-year wait? Uh... See, I'm going to compare this to another game. I'm going to compare this to Donkey Kong Country. Because Donkey Kong Country kind of came towards the end of NS- SNES, yeah, I would say. Yeah, it was uh, in 94, I believe. Yeah. You're right, 94. Mm-hmm. You, know, you know, made by Rare. Everybody loves this. This is actually the sec- second best-selling game of the SNES. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, beating like Mario Kart and Street Fighter 2 to show you how popular it was. Uh, the only thing that beats it is the game that the, this game that came with the system. Super Mario so, World. So, yeah, in terms of sales, yeah, the highest selling game. Um, so this game looks really good. It's the best looking SNES game you're gonna get. Uh, and it's a spectacularly awesome game. Not just because of the graphics, just the gameplay. And this came towards the end of the life of SNES. Star Fox 2 also came out towards the end and leverages the Super FX ship. Which is why I never came out on the Virtual Council. We talked about this in an earlier episode as well. Yes, episode 32 it was, I believe. 
there's at least two games I'm aware of: uh, Super Mario World 2, which is Yoshi's Island, mm-hmm. and the uh, Donkey, uh, sorry, and uh, Star Fox 2, uh, yeah. which is really the reason I got this whole thing because I was like, I don't know when Star Fox 2 is gonna come out for Virtual Console if it does. So comparing the graphics, it's like night and day. Donkey Kong Country looks a lot better. Uh, so I don't. I understand this. It was a sprites and stuff like this that helped with SFX chip. But to me, it still, Donkey Kong Country still leaps and bounds above it. As a game alone, yeah, it's a fun game. Uh, I like the concept. I, I think their idea was actually interesting. I just wish they, you know, laid it out more or stretched it out more, and in a fun way, not just stretch it out to stretch it out, but in a fun way. Um, it's one of those games you can just play in an hour and beat it. It'll be fun. You'll you enjoy yourself. It's a good game. Uh, I just I'm just comparing this to some other huge game, and that's gonna be Donkey Kong Country. You know, Donkey Kong Country is a lot better. Donkey is Donkey Kong Country in the SNES. Yeah, classic. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I I'll play the Star Fox too, but that's not the main reason I want the Star Fox too. I want it for Final Fantasy three. Uh, I think Secret of Mana is there, uh, Earthbound, Super Metroid, and I know a lot of those games you already have on the Retron. But or you, or they're in the Virtual Console. I have met Super Metroid on the Virtual Console. Yeah, but that's only on the 3DS, is it? Yeah, it's on the 3DS. Yeah, and you can't play that on the Switch or or, or even the Wii. Right. So that's why it sucks. Is nobody wants to? Uh, most people want to play it on the TV like like they did back in the day. Yeah. So that's the selling point of the Super uh, SNES Classic, sir. You yeah, caved, now you have caved, a lot of trouble getting you, you in. in. I wonder if it gets uh, hacked, too. I'm sure it, 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 somebody will find a way. I mean, the SN, uh, sorry, the, S, the NES Classic from last year got hacked. Yeah, uh, people are saying it's almost the same thing, so it should get hacked quick. Yeah, it's just an emulator. It's just like a, a fucking Raspberry Pi, which... Most people can build, uh, you know, for about the same price and and get the ROMs in the in the Raspberry Pi. You know, it's, it's a similar concept. Just the 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 main selling point is that the they took Nintendo, made made it uh, replicated it in as as you already know mini size miniature size. Uh, I think it fits in, like in the palm of your hand, right? Or the, or the cartridge is yeah. about the same size as the cartridge of the Super Nintendo. It's about yeah. I, I when the video if you want you want to see the video I yeah. post it on YouTube. And bits for you, podcast. <laughs> yeah, the I have it next next to uh, Genesis, not the the one that's coming out soon. It's the, the one I got for my collector's edition with Sonic, because mm-hmm. that Genesis is just about you know, life you know the, the same size as the real one. So I put it right next to it so you can see the difference. It's really tiny. Really tiny, sir. That's what, that's what your mom said when she saw you. Exactly. <laughs> So, what are yeah, the, it's a lot of fun, and uh, I know people are pissed off they can't get it. Honestly, uh, you could get the other games somewhere else. The big thing to play here is Star Fox 2. Now, I actually own Super Mario World 2, uh, so it's not a big deal for me. It would originally would be, but since I have the actual cart and I can actually play it already, it's not such a big deal for me. But it's actually obviously another great game to, to play. Hmm. Any other gaming news that you have? Uh, no. How about the Splatoon 2 killer? I know you're still playing Splatoon 2 while Sony just released... Uh, well, they released um, this week. Uh, I, sent, I just sent you the link. It's uh, Senra Kagura Peach Beach Splash. You should watch the video. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play it here so uh, our listeners could... Uh, could uh listen in it's uh this is just a trailer are you watching it no because you know I mean, it's loading it would stop what stops the video no no i mean it would uh stop me from podcasting oh okay well it's um it's a knockoff of splatoon 2 it's based on a series of uh, ninja women that are um, in bikinis, <laughs> popular in Japan, and that's pretty, pretty much all. The, that's what it is. It's like Splatoon two, but just with women in bikinis. 
<laughs> I just I saw the trailer and I was laughing, so I just wanted to mention that. I know this is the actually yeah, I'm watching it now. How's this like Splatoon two at all? Because <laughs> oh, they have water guns. They have water guns and they have to. <laughs> well, they can't hide, hide in the ink or anything like that. Uh, no, it's just water. None of that stupid ink shit. <laughs> it's just hilarious how the they made this quick knockoff with like thirty girls in bikinis in Japan. I'm watching the gameplay. It's very different from Splatoon Two. How is it different? It's the same shit. The only the only thing you have the only thing that's the same is that they're shooting. <laughs> like, like you say, this is the same. It has the same. It's similar to Call of Duty. Then it's the same thing. No, it's no, Call of Duty. it's not Call of Duty. It's not a first-person shooter. <laughs> oh, whatever. One well, is uh, SOCOM or something. If anybody's played the Seron, or is it Senran Kagura Peach Beach Splash, let us know what they think of it, and let us know if you think it's better than Splatoon Two. It's anime girls with big boobs yeah. shooting each other with water guns. <laughs> with water guns. That's exactly what it is. Oh shit! This is like those uh, budget titles. They cost like twenty or thirty dollars. Not like your typical sixty dollar game. Although I wouldn't be surprised if it's sixty dollars for some shitty ass game. It'd be some teenager boy that you know is horny as hell who will play this. <laughs> yeah. Um. So uh, let's wrap this up with uh, South Park. We're also gonna do Game of Faces, by the way. Oh, that's right. So South Park first. Um, we previously we we uh, talked about the season premiere uh, last week. Uh, so this week. We are going to discuss the last two episodes, uh, episode two and three. Episode two, I don't remember much. I know it was with Cartman um, saying that he was going to commit suicide because his girlfriend uh, broke up with him or something. Is that yeah. how it was? Okay. Uh, what did you think of that episode? Uh, not as memorable as the first one, but that's normal. The first ones is usually the one everybody talks about first and uh, for a while because <laughs> you know, it was you know impactful or funnier. Uh, the second one, I can't remember too much, to be honest, besides the suicide gimmick. You know, Cartman's just being Cartman, and he's saying, oh, my girlfriend's breaking up with me, I'm going to commit suicide. And then she gets back to him because she doesn't want him to commit suicide. And he takes advantage of the fact that he wants attention for, you know, trying to do suicide, commit, trying to commit suicide. So yeah, that's the whole premise, really. Yeah, uh, that... It's funny, but nothing uh, spectacular. No, I had this funny moment. I just don't remember much about it. So the the one after that, is Episode the one that two. I enjoyed more. It was um uh shit I just blanked out. What was it about? <laughs> so shit, it's I just had a it, brain fart. It's funny I actually it's funny to me because my girlfriend asked me a while ago about the DNA test stuff. Like why do people Oh do yes, that? yes, that now it came to me. Yeah. And to be very specific, uh why do white Caucasians uh do these things and care about them so much. Yeah. So the episode is basically, um, you know, being as South Park as, as they are, uh, satire on what's happening currently with the whole uh, people wanting to associate with the race. Like uh, some people want to associate themselves as uh, being, you know, Hispanic, black, uh, Asian, whatever. And he makes, starts um, making a deal about uh, Columbus Day. So Columbus Day is being uh, canceled, meaning that there's no more Columbus Day is a um, they have to go to school that day. They they don't stay home. Um. So there, he's basically protesting. Uh, what is it Stan's dad? Yeah, Stan's dad. Yes, is the one that goes to the school board and tells them to cancel Columbus Day because he was a murderer, and we, sh- uh, you know, America shouldn't celebrate a murderer. So he gets his wish, and they cancel. The, and Carmen's pissed, and so the other kids are like. Oh, dude, you know, your dad, it's your dad's fault. He's the one that canceled Columbus Day. So then his dad um, starts uh, this whole, you know, protest against Col- Christopher Columbus. And he there's pictures of him, right? With him wearing Christopher Columbus costumes. On Instagram, past. yeah. Right. So he tries to prove <laughs> that, that, that he's Native American. <laughs> the way he goes about it is fucking hilarious. For those of you who haven't seen it, you know, this, this is gonna we're gonna go into spoiler territory here, but um, it's so he does like you just mentioned the ancestry, the whole DNA thing, and he gets a Native American uh, older male, and he pays him some money, and he starts making <laughs> out with 
Because he makes out with him because the test is a saliva test. It's, it's, yeah, it's so he swabs saliva. the side of his mouth there. So he he goes to the guy that does the test. He swabs the mouth with the with the little stick that takes the saliva, puts it in the tube, ships it to the to the company that does the the ancestry DNA test. Um, so the the in the Native American guy <laughs> falls in love with with Stan's dad. He's like, I I I love you. We should be together. <laughs> <laughs> doing a bad impersonation but he and, and stands says like no get away from me you asshole or whatever or, you know i don't i was just using you so the whole episode it's it's him being paranoid that you know he's gonna be uh the the, the truth is gonna come out that he he worshiped or you know celebrated christopher columbus all the time it, the, even on his wedding day he was wearing the the, co- the, the costume cosplay, yeah. yeah um and then at the, one of the funniest scenes to me was at when the when the guy when the DNA company comes back to his house, and like there was a, an irregularity in the test. We we had to do another 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 test, so he ca- he goes and finds the Native American guy, he makes out with him again, <laughs> goes back into the to the to his house to do the test again, and they're like, no, it's not gonna be saliva this time. It has to be anal. <laughs> At that point, I was like, "Holy shit, he's gonna have anal sex with the Native American guy!" But it turns out it didn't happen. We didn't so, what do you think about point. the whole uh, DNA test stuff, though? Me personally, when I say DNA test, is to figure out your family heritage, your what you're made of, basically, your uh, DNA. I I don't really see. You, the... Did you ever care to even do that? Part at times I did. Um, I was having this discussion with my fiance earlier. I think this year because um, I think her, one of her sisters uh, did it, and um, you know you find out okay you're part of this, you're part of that, but I already know that. Why am I going to pay a hundred dollars? That we already come from. I'm a big history buff, so I know, and I'm not you know I'm none of these people that are ashamed to say okay you know we have. Uh, ancestry from Asia, from Africa, from Europe, you know, obviously we all come from pretty much the same areas of the world. I, I don't really need it. Like, I already know that I, I'm Hispanic heritage, you know, first generation born in America. So why the fuck do I need that shit? Do you care about it? I, uh, I remember when my girlfriend asked me, I'm like, I don't know why people don't care about this so much. I actually right. gave her a story about Kansas. Uh, oh. Uh, basically, this guy at work, and he's doing like a Scottish style wedding. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, this is his wife, uh, well, soon to be wife, and I'm like, oh, she born in Scotland. It's like, oh, she has family heritage in there. I'm like, oh, so she doesn't like she, she doesn't. I, I met her too before. She doesn't. Uh, uh-huh. It's not something you. She kind of. Uh, you can't tell. And you don't. Uh, I mean, you can tell kind of what she looks. I mean, like you can't tell she's tied to that. You can tell she was born in Kansas, and her parents were not from Scotland or something. Like immediately, this is uh-huh. something way down the line thing. And uh, I just thought of, I was I thought when I asked that, I know a photo when I, he gave me the answer, and I was like, in the end, I I thought about it. I was like people just want to pee up. Hold on a second, because you keep uh, cutting, I never you, cared. You keep cutting out. Hold on, I don't know why you're breaking up. Well, I don't know why I'm breaking up, but uh. Okay, continue. I think people just do it just to uh, be part of something. That's what I'm trying to get to. Uh, I never really cared. Because yeah, and that's that's the point that the South Park episode was trying to make. That okay, it, it, they they were making fun of the whole ancestry thing, and the whole you know race association or, or racial, um, you know, as as it race is a hot topic in in this country, and has been in the news uh, lately. So they poke fun at that and also trying to prove their point. And their point, from what I understood from watching this recent episode of South Park, is that, hey, fuck all that DNA shit. We all know if you study history, which is fact, it's in the books, it's scientifically proven, you, we're all people. We all don't, you know, we're all the same. We all breathe. We all have this, you know, two eyes, two ears. We, it's just, you know, color of the skin separates us or the part of the world where we come from. Or we're all the same race. That's what I took from it. But then they go and they went the extra step and saying, okay, look, if you want to do it, uh, because some people are into that stuff, which is fine. I guess you can do it. I just don't see the point in doing the whole whatever it costs. Yeah, I, I, I see it in real life. Like people are like, oh, I'm like 5% Indian, uh, you know, Native American. Native American. I'm like, oh, 
okay. Like, you know, like, I, I don't see the purpose of it. Maybe because my, I know exactly where my parents are from. Mom came from Cuba. My dad came from Colombia. They, they were born there. There's no like mystery here, right? And yeah, then, and then, and your parent, and your, and your mom, sure. and, and your mom, mom and dad's ancestry comes from Europe, and then you can yes, go Spain, even further back, and they can probably have you know Genghis Khan. You know that uh, one out of uh, I think I, I said one out of eight people uh, in the world has uh, Genghis Khan's DNA because during that era he was just fucking like a bunch of people in that era. I think he, I think that the, they said that his his. Uh, the Genghis Khan era killed like over, I think, fifty million people in the world at that point in history. Yeah. Well, anyways, I, I just didn't. I don't care. I I, I see why people care because they want to be part of something and have pride in something. Because if you're some uh, neutral, they should, they should have person, human pride. Doesn't be mean, but that's it. Yeah, they just want to be part of something. Oh, I don't want to be proud that I'm from, I don't know, Kansas. It's, it's that for tribal example. thing. Everybody wants to belong to a team. Yeah. That's all basically. it is. Uh, I, I just uh, don't really care. <laughs> so you're not gonna do the test? No, no, thank you. What if What if you come out being like 100% ninja, and you didn't do? Oh, you what? wouldn't know because you didn't do the test. I already know. <laughs> I'm 100% badass, so I don't need to do that fucking DNA that's, test. There you go. Yeah, that's it. That's that's all I need to say. So yeah, uh, so, South Park was funny. The recent episode. Um, that's about it. But let's do the game of faces. Let's do the game of faces. To remind people, we did this in an earlier episode. Yes. Basically, I'm going to tell Robert a statement. Mm -hmm. Within the statement, it's mostly the truth, but there is a lie in it. He has to spot it. If he doesn't spot it, he dies. Oh, shit. I don't want to die. If you just... Yeah, if you do spot it, you kill me. So what's my score? Uh, this is the, the this is this, gonna be this the, is the second time, uh -huh. and you lost last time, so you're ah, already dead. Shit, I'm, I died once. Fuck. You're a zombie now. Fuck. Okay, let's see if I can. If I win here, do I come back to life, or do I just stay alive? You kill me, and then we both are zombies. Oh, so if I win, you die. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay, let's go. Okay, so, so uh, this is all related to the Super Nintendo. Mm-hmm. So here's here's the uh, it's like a little paragraph. Mm -hmm. So the SNES or the Super Nintendo Entertainment System is a 16-bit video game console released in 1991 in North America. In Japan, it's called the Super Famicom and Super Cowboy in South Korea. So popular in Japan on release day, the Japanese got well because of, sorry I messed it up. But basically, so the SNES was released on uh, during the week, and it was released. Uh, during the release, people were missing work and school and all this stuff. So the government, the Japanese government, actually asked Nintendo for the future releases. They have to be on the weekend. Okay. And, you know, like I said, SNS was so popular, as you can see. Uh -huh. And the Yakuza was actually involved as well. They would actually uh, store drugs in the systems. Right. And, you know, steal them and, and put drugs in them to, to you know, to, to hide them, them and stuff. Right. So Nintendo had to start shipping these things at night to avoid the robbery. Hmm. That's it? That's the end of the paragraph? That's it. All right. So I had to figure out what statement is false. Yeah. Okay. This is going to help me because I, uh, I'm i almost done reading that book, Council Wars. Once I, I've been reading it for like six months already, off and on. Uh, so I do remember that the whole ordeal with um, the, the weekend releases is correct. I do remember the Yakuza thing. I'm trying to think if that was actual fact. I think... They mention it in the book. Fuck. Uh, the only thing that stood out to me that was a lie was the whole South Korea or Korea thing. But uh, what about <laughs> let me see if that's my final answer. No googling. No, I'm not googling. I'm trying to think back to the. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say that's my final answer. The Korea thing is is, is fake. It's a lie. To be honest, uh, you are dead, Robert. God damn it, fucking Javi. God damn it. Cut. You kind of you fell for the same trap as the last one. In Sonic, I think you picked the the needle mouse thing, right? Yeah, yeah, and I, and I was completely. It was in the book too. I fuck I fucked that up too. So I picked. So once again, I picked. I try to pick something with an obvious looks. Like you think it's a lie, but it's actually truth. 
So maybe this will help you for the third time because you're now a dead zombie. Fucker. Uh, so what the lie is here, it's truthful that the Yakuza were stealing the Nintendos, the Super Nintendos. But they weren't selling it at a, night. They were not storing drugs in them. That's the lie. Oh, okay. That that threw me off, the whole drug thing. Fucking yep. A. So now you're a dead zombie. I don't know what you are now. I'm a zombie that's dead. How the fuck? That's fucking... Is it, what's the word? Rhetorical? You're, <laughs> you're a dead undead? <laughs> dead undead. <laughs> I can't be de- deader than, than what I am. <laughs> we'll see. We'll do this again some other time. And, uh... Yeah. If someone if someone wants to suggest a topic, you can tweet us at bits or as in the number four you podcast at Twitter. You can also find us on. Yeah, I'm gonna repeat that because you're cutting out again. Maybe your internet connection is crapping out. It's bits for you, um, bits for you podcast at gmail dot com. Uh, Twitter is at bits for you podcast. And uh, I think that's it. Anything else you want to say? Follow us on Bits for You Podcast Jesus, on Twitter. Come on, Javi. All right. Stay sexy, Javi. Always. Adios. All right. So I'm two for two in losing on this game of faces. Javier is always getting me so far, so. And I'll defeat him. I'm going to return from being a dead zombie, as he calls it. Jesus, Javi. Uh, please uh, review us on iTunes. Uh, just search for Bits For You. Review us there. Uh, even on your favorite podcast app. Uh, you can always email us, bitsforyoupodcast at gmail.com. That's B-A-T-S, the number four, U, Y-O-U. Podcast, P-O-D-C-A-S-T, at gmail.com. Same uh, is on Twitter. Twitter handle is at bits for you podcast. Facebook handle is uh, at bits for you podcast. And Instagram is bits for you pod. That's where we post updates, uh, things that we find interesting are going to be posted uh, mainly on Twitter and Instagram. So check it out. Uh, that's it for now. We will be back soon with more reviews of horror films that we like and enjoy so look forward to that and uh that's it i'm done hasta luego